Hello and welcome. I'm John from the LG Training Center and today I'd like to give you some do-it-yourself tips. In this case, dryers that either don't heat or don't heat enough. Um, a couple things that we can check is, um, let's go ahead and we'll run the dryer, um, turn it on, actually get it started. Make sure that you're in a normal cycle. Uh, make sure that you're not set for air dry. If you have a selector switch on your dryer, make sure that it's not turned on to air dry because air dry um, will run the cycle with the drum tumbling, but there will be no heat. Um, so let this run for about a minute, maybe uh, two minutes. And what we want to do then is after that one minute has stopped, let's go ahead and we'll stop this. We can actually turn off the dryer. And what we'll do is we'll open this up and we'll put our hand inside here. Now, um, I'm either going to feel no heat or I'm going to feel heat. If we don't feel any heat, there could be a problem with the dryer, but there's some simple things that you can check before we um, send out a service personnel to check out your dryer. And one of the things you might want to verify when you have a no heat situation, if you have an electric dryer, there's a good possibility that um, your circuit breaker has tripped. Now in most cases on some of the newer homes and built in the last um, maybe a couple decades, um, coating requires that these two be ganged together. If one side of the line trips, both of them are gonna trip. But I've seen on some of the um, very old installations, they had a little metal bar in between here that sometimes would get weak and what would happen is the circuit breaker would trip only one side. Now if it trips the side that's going to the heating element, what will happen is your dryer will still run. Remember your dryer uh, motor uh, runs off 110 volts, your heating element runs off 220. So the heating elements require both of these legs of the circuit breaker while your timer and your lights and your um, actually drive motor um, require only 110. So a simple way of checking this is of course um, if it is tripped go ahead and bring it back to the off position and then bring it all the way back to the on position and check it again. Now if the circuit breaker trips again or it uh, runs for a short time and it trips a circuit breaker uh, we can either have a problem with the circuit breaker or you can have a problem with the dryer. In, in that situation, we can call for service. and We can go ahead and verify whether the problem's in the dryer. Um, they can advise you whether or not that's the case and take care of it. Or if they do determine you have a weak circuit breaker, they can go ahead and advise you to call an electrician to take care of that. Another thing that we run across too is this requires two legs of your line. Sometimes when they go ahead and hook up a electronic, uh, electric heating circuit. Um, it might be somebody that isn't a trained professional uh, electrician. So what they might do is they don't have room for this circuit breaker here, but they got an open circuit breaker here and they got an open circuit breaker here. This is against building codes. You're not allowed to separate these two. They have to be joined together. So in this case, what's going to happen is one of these could trip on you and the other one could stay live. That's a dangerous situation. And if um, you have that type of problem in your home, that needs to be corrected by electrician. Now let's get back to the case where when I put my hand in there, I felt heat. One of the first things that you should really check is this. This is your lint filter. Um, I've just gotten in the habit of every time I dry clothes, when I take my clothes out and fold them, I will actually pull this out and I will actually remove the lint from here. Um, there could be where you maybe forgot to uh, remove the lint from here and maybe it's been accumulating for quite a while. This will affect the airflow on that dryer and this can give you a drying problem. You'll get heat, but what you might find is you have to run the dryer several times before it actually dries. Another problem we run across these, if you use those dryer towels, what can happen is this can leave a coating on there. And that coating will affect the airflow of your dryer. A simple way to check this is after you remove the lint from here, go to your sink or go to your um, little utility tub in your laundry room and uh, pour some water over this. Uh, if there is not a problem with that, the water will flow through here. But if the water pools up in here and doesn't flow through the screen, this needs 
needs to be cleaned. One of the ways that you can do it is use some mild detergent with a soft cloth. Go ahead and wash this or you can soak it in some mild detergent and then go ahead and rinse it out real good and see if water actually does flow through there. Do not put this back into the dryer until this is adequately dried. At that point, when it's dried, you can go ahead and put this back in again and then do a load of laundry and see if it does actually work. Now, another thing that we can run across is um, you might run a cycle, and if you're using what we call a Department of Energy cycle, which is this cottons and normals, that's usually where it'll default to when it turns on. Um, this, on some of the newer dryers, they're energy efficient. And they'll have a setting on here called um, either Eco or Energy Saver. And what that does is this will actually run a longer cycle but it will run in the early stages of that cycle without any heat. You won't get any heat towards the end of the cycle. Now, if you don't have an energy efficient wash machine, which is designed to extract a lot of the moisture out of the clothes, and you, you have an older design washing machine, using that eco center might not completely dry your clothes. Or you might have even noticed that uh, maybe you had started the dryer and you noticed that you needed to add something so you turned it off and you reached inside here and you didn't feel any heat um, that you were actually in that eco mode. Now if you want to use the normal cycle and you don't want to use the eco mode, if you want heat from the very start, all you have to do is once you start the dryer up, just hit that little button, the light will deselect and it'll go back to a normal drying cycle. Um, all of the rest of the cycles on this dryer will work normal. You'll get heat right from the very beginning. It's only on the new dryers with the eco setting on there. Okay. Now, if I do have a problem um, with, I do notice heat, but my clothes are taking longer to dry, we could have a problem with the vent. There's a real easy way to check this, and what we want to do is, let's go outside and I'll show you what to check on the outside of your house. So I'm going to go ahead and start the dryer here. And then we'll turn it on, and then uh, we'll pause for a minute, and we'll go outside, and we'll show you what to check. Thank you. Okay. okay, I'm outside of our training center, and this is where the vent terminates on the outside. So with your dryer running, what you want to do is feel the force of the air coming through here. Um, another thing to check for is if you listen, if you have good airflow through here, you'll actually hear the air blowing through the vent. Um, if it sounds muffled or you don't feel a lot of air coming through there, then we've got a problem with the vent. The vent needs some maintenance. As you can see here, I got some screening to creep some of the animals out. Some of that lint is accumulating in through here, and that can also give me a problem later. So we'll talk about what to do on your venting on another video. But let's go back inside and we'll, um, I got a couple other things to talk about, and then we'll go ahead and close this video out for you. Okay, um, as you can see, we went outside and we actually verified whether or not we had good airflow. We can actually hear the airflow running through there, and that's a good way of determining whether our, our vent needs servicing or not. Uh, remember, some of these vents can terminate on the roof, and some of them can terminate on the second floor. Um, if you don't feel comfortable about checking it that way, please call someone in. We're concerned about your safety. We don't want to get you hurt if, if you don't feel comfortable in uh, checking anything that's not on the ground level, then please call for service on this thing. Um, one thing to remember is your warranty does not cover venting issues. So if you determine that your vent does need service, um, you can call a company or um, the company that uh, will come out for service. You can ask them whether or not they do vent cleaning and they can quote your price to see what that would be. Remember, venting is not covered by the manufacturer's warranty. Another thing I want to talk about is some of our dryers have what we call uh, flow sense on there. And flow sense will give you an indication on your control panel whether or not your vent needs service. Um, you can have some of them that will have a series of bars that come up there if you get four bars or you get a light under flow sense that usually means that your vent needs attention or some of them will give you an error code that says D80, D90 or D95. Okay, um, Let me tell you a couple things. Um, if you're getting a D80 error code um, the dryer will still dry clothes, but what will happen is it's very wasteful because what you'll have to do is run several cycles. Um, that should be taken care of, um, but you will get some heat from it. Uh, the more severe ones are the D90 and D95. Those need immediate attention. We don't want that lint to build up and start a fire. 
Uh, we don't want your venting to start on fire or anything like that. So get that taken care of. Um, the other thing is the location of your dryer. It can give you false readings, especially if you keep on getting a D error code and your venting system has been checked out and it looks adequate. What might happen is these dryers were designed to go in a normal occupancy, either down in a basement or in a laundry room, but sometimes I see dryers are installed in a garage. Now sometimes with very hot climates, especially if you're down south, um, the garage can get very hot. The way the flow sensing system works is it looks for a temperature change in your duct outlet. Being in a hot location, what happens is there's a very short range that it's detecting and it will give you a reading that you do have a problem with the vent even though you don't. Uh, one of the things, that, the clues that let you know that this could be because of where it's located is, it seems like the dryer is drying okay but I keep on getting that error code coming up on there. Um, on some of the dryers, if you actually get your owner's manual out, um, there are instructions inside your owner's manual to show you how to get into what we call an installation check. And I'll show you what series of buttons to press and, um, and hit the start button. And then it'll come up as INS and you'll start it with your start pause button. This will run about two minutes and it will tell you at the end of two minutes whether or not you have a problem with the vent. One thing to remember, if you're going to do the install test, you cannot do the test when a dryer is hot. The dryer has to be at room temperature when you're doing that test. Um, I have another video that you can refer to and it will talk a little more about your venting, what you can do to determine whether or not your venting is the problem. So I hope you found this information useful and if there's anything we can do, remember we want to thank you for being one of our customers and we're here to help you. So have a great day.